Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Sideline Talk podcast. We've been chatting with members of the Web3 sports community on the show, notably So Rare and DraftKings Rainmakers players. Today, I have a very special guest with me. After my conversation with Mark, aka YNWA, which was my most watched episode by far, he said to me, you really have to get on Miguel to the show. He was he would be a great guest. So I reached out and you said you would do it. You'll be off camera for this today, which is totally cool with me. But anyways, Miguel, how's it going? It's going great, man. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here today and just wanted to say you've done a great job um, doing all the time you've been doing the pod, and I think it's one of the most positive things in, in this rare MLB community. Also, thank you to YNWA for suggesting me as a guest. Um, I'm always happy to join and, and hop in and, on podcasts to maybe give some people an overview of Sora MLB and, and what to look for in the future. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, no, I appreciate the kind words. And uh, one thing I meant to ask you uh, before the show is your name is Miguel, right? Because on, on Twitter is Tor Miguel, and then you have just Mike it here. But, you, but your first name is Miguel, correct? My first name is Miguel. Yes, sir. Okay, <laughs> just making sure before <laughs> I uh, said you know said that in, in the intro. I figured, uh, but just making sure. All right, so uh, yeah, we had to we had to postpone um, a, a few um, attempts at, at doing this this podcast uh, because of there's a huge flood where you live uh, in the Dominican Republic. Is, is everything is good now uh, with the flood? Everything is is resolved. Yes, we had a flood about two weeks ago. Um, thankfully, right now everything's great. But during the time, it was messed up. Um, bad things happened. Thankfully, my family's good and the people around me are safe. But at the at the time, we had to go out and, and rescue some people. Um, so, but now now we're good. So, thank you, thank you for asking that. Okay, yeah, just making sure there uh, looks pretty bad from what I saw on Twitter. All right, so uh, you have you don't do too much uh, so rare content, uh, but you are a high stakes player. Uh, so maybe some people don't know all that much about your background. You are a self described sports addict that you have in your bio there. Uh, so do you mind yes. sharing how you originally got into the game of so rare? Well, I got into the game of so rare via the football side first back in twenty twenty one November. A friend of mine just. Thought I would be great at this because I've always been doing sports, um, fantasy sports. So he suggested, and I started with limiteds. Um, first purchase was um, Cabrera, uh, Uruguayan defender, and then from there I started growing and and liking the game. Started as a trader, I would I could say. Um, flip some cards, enjoyed that, and then MLB MLB announcement came out, and I said, oh shit. Um, I'm sorry if I can't curse, but no, you can't. Uh, yeah, can't for it. <laughs> like I, I saw that and I saw that opportunity, and I said, okay, let me sell everything, let me get ready for this. So when it hopped, when it it, it came out, I, I I started from the from the get go, I'll always behind YNWA and all those auctions of one of one of a hundred. <laughs> but um, yeah, I got into it like that, and I, I enjoyed a lot. As far as I'm a beef. Um, the first season, I'll say the second season, not so much. But, um, yeah, the first season, ML sorry, MLB was great. Hopped on sorry, NBA 2. Actually, the the one I've done the best so far, um, return-wise and winning-wise. And now just jumped on uh, football side again, and I'm loving it. So I've been all over around. I'm a, I'm a sports addict because I, I, that's mostly all I do um first and foremost baseball second football and third nba really far third so actually football is my first sport i i started playing football and watching football since i was a kid um i'm a real madrid fan um thankfully lived there for a while and got to see three seasons or four seasons of them at the Bay weekly and my Chicago Cubs are my, my, my baseball team. I follow them closely. Also a, a Bulls fan. Not so much, but that's, that would be my NBA team. So, yeah, that's that's why I have a sports addict on my bio because I really watch a lot of sports. Yeah, yeah. I, I see your, uh, your so rare MLB gallery. Uh, lots of good players, uh, tons of unique cards. I want to get into that uh, for sure. And I've seen you um, tweet a lot about football as well. And, and I saw uh, you, you have made some recent acquisitions 
um, in your unique gallery, which I want to get to as well. I, I was creeping on your gallery before just to uh, prep for this. Um, all right. So would, would you, uh, being located outside the U.S., do, do you find this so rare um, is the best way uh, to engage with sports, you know, seeing that some of these major daily fantasy companies like DraftKings and FanDuel only operate in the U.S.? Yeah, without a doubt, I think I think sure MLB offers the best um, opportunity uh, for enjoyment, for creating a connection to players and teams, to follow players and teams you would, would usually not follow. So without a doubt, I think sure MLB has a, the best product um, to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, my last question on your background. Uh, do you have any... Um, experience uh, with uh, crypto or the NFT streets? Were you, were you flipping JPEGs back in 2021 uh, and anything like that that led you in, into this, you know, crypto based fantasy sports platform? Just one. And I would never go, go, go at it again. My brother told me about an opportunity to buy this. I don't know. I have no clue what it is. And it was about two ETH. And I said, sure. I mean, I'll follow you. You know what you're doing, I guess. We bought it for about two ETH. That turned into 0 0.05 maybe in a year and a half. <laughs> so never again trying that. Um, then I thankfully found Sora and I've done decent here. So that 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 ETH lost was is forgotten, thankfully. Fair enough. Yeah, that's uh, probably had a sour taste in your mouth. Yeah, uh, from that. <laughs> but um, yeah, glad I led you to Sora eventually. We we like Sora here. Um, all right. So I want to get into your gameplay. Uh, like I said, I was checking out your gallery. Um, you play football at high stakes. I see you have 49 super rares, 10 uniques. Uh, but MLB is definitely the one you play the most. 49 super rares, 16 uniques. Um, you have 49 super rares of both sports. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not. Um, Absolutely and, and, a coincidence. That's great. Okay. <laughs> I just saw it too. So, um, Yeah, and, and then not just any uniques for these, these uh, baseball players. I see you have... Uh, just name a few Mike Trout's 2023 card, Anthony Volpe's rookie 2023 card, and World Series MVP Corey Seager's unique card. Um, so, do you mind sharing uh, sort of maybe what the initial investment was into Sora MLB and how, how did you build up this gallery? Sure. Um, well, I started off back in, in, in the 22 season. Um, buying players I could afford because I was competing against the big guys, as you know. I don't consider myself a big guy compared to those guys. So um, I was buying Brady Singer, Giancarlo Stanton in a slump for five years, maybe. Um, I got the chance to buy Freddie, and I said, I can't slip on this and because he's one of the best hitters in the game. So slowly, I, I, I was adding pieces. Um, at the beginning, it was all over the place. I was, I was not having real results. Um, but I had a conversation with a friend of mine, Orange Fly. You might know him. I know you do. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, bro, just go big. Like, try and go for, for home run hitters. I've always been looking for five tool players. So he kind of changed the output on my mind. And I said, sure. I mean, if you don't go big, you're not going anywhere. And that's when I tried to, I, I tried to get for the sluggers. I got Pete. I got Mike, I got Seeger, and those three guys were the guys that gave me the results. Them three and Freddie made everything happen. I got, actually, I don't know if you saw the rewards I got, but I got um, I got plenty of Acunas and Otanis this year, and I'm hoping to keep adding them this year, next year. Mostly I sell them because I want to buy uniques. I hope, I really hope they have value next year because if they don't, then... Me and Sora is not existent on the MLB side. But, yeah, um, I also really like rookies. Um, I'm from the Dominican Republic, so, you know, I got to get my closer, Camilo Duval. And then um, I truly believed on, on Anthony Volpe as a prospect. I think if you see his numbers, he probably didn't hit well um, based on what you think uh, the prospect pedigree would, would uh, correlate to. But... The overall numbers are great. I mean, first rookie for the Yankees in a long time to have a 2020 season, I believe. Also, makeup-wise, I mean, how he, he behaves around the sport, how his teammates um, connect to him, that makes you believe he they see what he truly can do on the field. And also, defensively, he can hold it. He can play a shortstop with ease. He got a gold glove as a rookie. 
not not many can do that. So that tells you he'll he'll be around the sport for a long time. And my second favorite rookie I own is Bob Miller, who I think has ace potential. He can be the number number one starter for for the Dodgers. Well, number two or three behind Shohei now, but but he he has the stuff to do anything he wants on the on the on the mound. And last, I'll mention Miguel Vargas, who I think is a great hitter, and hopefully next year he can have a chance to play every day. Yeah, yeah, I saw the uh, the Bobby Miller card that you got um yeah definitely some um electric strikeout stuff with him um and and yeah they have shohei now who might not be pitching next year um but definitely with that huge contract he signed he will be pitching for them eventually uh do you have any thoughts on on the shohei to to the dodgers um acquisition or did you did you think maybe he was going to toronto what were your thoughts on the situation my my thoughts honestly um at the beginning of the of the saga let's mention uh, I thought he was going to the Dodgers. Uh, at the end of the season, first month of the offseason, I thought Dodgers are closed on him. And they're, that's his guy, and his, his, that's his team he wants to go. Just based on geography, um, winning time, they're right now winning. They always win. Um, they had space um, because they had let go of Trey Turner to create space for, for Shohei. Um, so it makes sense. After that, I thought, Oh, Dave Roberts messed up on that on that um, press conference. He said they had a meeting with him a week ago, and Shohei expressed he didn't want that to be divulged. So I thought they were off the table for a while, and that's when Toronto became a a, a big team that he would likely go to. But in my mind, I, I never thought he he would really go to Toronto, just based on geography and time time zones compared to Japan. I think he wants uh, people in Japan to see his games. And playing in, in Toronto, I think it'd be four hours difference, maybe uh, mm -hmm. aggregated from from L.A. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around there. And, and that's one thing I thought didn't make sense. Also, just moving to Toronto would be such a difference from him or him and his family. Um, weather wise, um, a lot of things. So my second team actually was the Giants. I thought the Giants had a real chance. The only hiccup they had was the competing uh, competing window. They were they are not in a competing window right now, so that's why I think they fell um, as a far second. And third, I would say the Cubs. I think the Cubs had a chance to really get him. I think uh, they were really aggressive on him. Um, I think the the only issue they had was the, the space. Um, I don't think they had a lot of space on the on the salary tax. So that's why I think they probably didn't get him. But, but yeah, I like the deal. I think the Dodgers will make those 700 look like nothing in a couple of years because he's going to sell a lot of shirts. Um, and also, he's going to win them a lot. You're basically getting a Gary Cole and, a, and a Aaron Judge in the same player, which is absurd yeah. to think of. And they did a smart thing um, with the bonuses. It's not going to be 70 per year. It's going to be like 40 to 50, and the rest is going to be divided in bonus and diverted in time so they can have a lot of space to compete and add talent to make the team better. Yeah, yeah, 700 uh, is pretty crazy of a number. I think it was like 300 million more than the second highest contract, which I yep. think was Mike Trout. Um, yes, and, and and yeah, you... um. You made some good points with the time different stuff and 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 his family having to move to a whole different location. Yeah, like in hindsight, it makes sense that the Dodgers made a ton of sense. Um, also, a competing team. Um, yeah, they, the Dodgers they need to get a real World Series. Uh, no offense to 2020, 60 game season they did win that year, but yep. I think you know they need a they need that real win. We'll call it. Um, and I think I that, agree. You know, they're, they're probably they're probably pretty close to that uh, with with their new acquisition of Otani. Um, all right, so yeah. what was that? Sorry. No, I agree. They are in, in the competing window. I think they will be, they're probably be the favorites for this year. Um, if Gavin Lux comes back and plays short, they I think they have a complete team. Um, I mean, yeah. you can't go wrong wrong having Mookie, Shohei, and Freddie as in your one, two, and three. So, yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, fun facts about Gavin Lux: I saw his first ever at bat at Dodger Stadium. Uh, so I'm a big fan nice. of him. Uh, too bad he didn't get to play this last season, though. He uh, got hurt Sadly. spring training. Yep. He was out, but but he is a good second baseman there for the Dodgers. Um, all right, so I want to ask you more about your uh, 
gameplay uh, with all these cards that you have, all these great players, I'm assuming that you have many podiums, many first place finishes. You don't keep the, the trophy emoji next to your name on Twitter like some other guests I've had on here do. It makes it easy to count them. Do you, do you have any um, idea how many um, podiums you, you, you reached this past season? In the past season, I think uh, it was about maybe 10. Somewhere around there. I, I did horrible in Super Rare. So it was all unique. Um, super Rare competition was really hard this year. And I'm, I'm not one buying Super Rares because I want to buy Uniques. So it made it really hard for me to compete in Super Rare. Um, but in Unique, I think I won about 10 podiums. Hmm. I think. And, I'm not sure, though. Yeah. Uh, so what makes you say Super Rare is harder? Does it have to do with the, the players that, that play there, just the bigger size contests? Uh, what would you say makes it harder? Well, one thing, the the distribution of rewards is horrible. You're playing for 12 rewards, seven of them being worthless because they're tier threes, fours, and fives against 130 people who have great teams. So why are you being so hesitant and so coward, I could say, of rewarding people that are buying your cards off the market. It doesn't make sense. It's a head scratcher for me. Um, you got to incentivize people to invest. If you don't do that, everything's going to die, and, and we're, we're not going to have a sore MLB third season next year. Yeah, and I, I know we've had uh, I've had several people on the show talk about the reward structure, probably the most polarizing topic of uh, amongst you know the high-stakes players I've had on here. Uh, Mark went on a really good rant about that. Um, so are there any any additional thoughts you have on that? Like any any specific changes you want to see made? Do you, are you optimistic about uh, season three? Do you want to, you know, do you have a certain guy you want to bring into so rare to, to make the changes? Yeah, truly. I, I'd like to see some um, some changes done um, on all levels, to be honest. I just want a, a different, I, I don't want to point fingers, but I, I just want a different approach yeah. towards the management of so rare MLB. I think they're they have the 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 foot on the brake, and I think they gotta let go, and do what the Surrey football side has done, and they have done amazing. People are really happy with the Premier League um, winner competition. People are happy with the caps um, on the thresholds. People are happy um, with the distribution of competitions you can enter. Um, they're they've been creative doing it. I know overall prices are down, but the product is great. And don't get me wrong, prices are down not because Sora football is bad. It's just because macroeconomically right now, it's not the greatest time to invest in this type of assets. You got to understand there's a lot of things happening in the world. So people have to prioritize their, their money elsewhere instead of buying cars, as you, uh, in, a, in a minimal way, saying it. So, yeah, I would like to see a different approach towards the management of Sora MLB. And I would like to see some defensive um, points being scored. I would like to see the catchers getting a caught stealing um, points added. I would like to see maybe outs above average for infielders and outfielders or maybe defensive run saves. Something that makes it more, gives value to different type of players. I mean, Kevin Kiermaier is probably worthless in Sarah MLB. But he'd be, he's one of the top five center fielders in the game. That should be valued, I think. Also, hmm. Harrison Bader's not great at the game because he's not a home run hitter. He's not a great hitter, but he's one of the best center fielders again. Um, I can put 100 examples of this. I would like to see that Max Fried would be even better because he's a gold glove starter every single year. Um, so, yeah, I, I just think you got to take the game to you got to get award the game for what it is. And there's a lot of defensive aspect on the baseball game that we need to recognize and value as a competition in Surrey MLB. Yeah, yeah, you're the first person who's ever mentioned that on the show, but, but that makes a lot of sense because it, it is something that's very undervalued. You know, people want to see the home runs. They want to see uh, the big hits, the clutch hits, but, um, you know, something very valuable is is having that center fielder, you know, that Jackie Bradley Jr. as a Red Sox fan. I mean, that guy, right. he was very valuable out there uh, doing diving catches and, uh, being awesome out there in center field. So, so yeah, I, I like that. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, hopefully we can see something like that. Um, all right. So I want to ask you a little bit about um, trading 
if 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 you are are actively uh, trading cards, if you've made big trades of other players, like how do you coordinate and and what are you sort of looking for when when setting up uh, trades in Sora MLB? All right, in Sora MLB, honestly, I haven't done many trades. I think the biggest one I've made was probably maybe Manny Machado. I bought last off season, um, and I traded actually via NBA. I mean, I won, I won a good amount of tier ones on NBA, and the manager that owned Manny on MLB wanted to move uh, Manny for NBA cards. And I thought, oh, this is perfect. I just won three straight tier ones. I'm going to try and offer him this amount of cards plus some ETH, um, valuing Manny really highly uh, considering the last sale. Um, and that was the biggest trade I, I pulled off, I think, also, I flipped. Well, not not flipped. I, I traded for Jack Flaherty because I thought I thought it would be smart to to trade Jose Abreu um, for Jack Flaherty, hoping Flaherty would come back and and be the ace he can be. But that hasn't turned out great for me. And um, I think that and Pete Alonso. I'm not sure how I tra- what I traded for him, but. Let me. Oh, I bought him. I bought him off um, Mark actually for probably forty percent of what he paid, which is sad to see. Um, and he he was great for me. He probably paid himself off really quickly. Um, in a couple of those series, he 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 hit four or five home runs. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it now. I see the the Manny Machado, Jack Flaherty trades. Um. How much? How much of of a, uh, a celebrity is is Manny Machado in the DR? I feel like he's got to be one of the the pinnacles of of MLB players. Or is there is there like who who would you say is, is there like a, a Dominican player who like is just worshipped down there? Albert Pujols maybe. Kind of. That's a great question, <laughs> and and maybe maybe Manny's perceived from the states like that, but he actually isn't the the most um, highly regarded player down here because he's not really that. I mean, he's Dominican. He, his parents are Dominican. I think he was born in the States, though, and he's lived most, most oh. of his life there. So I think the most worshipped player here is uh, David Ortiz. Oh, um, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know why, but people love David, and he's a great guy. I mean, he he takes pictures with anyone. He goes to the ballpark here. He's the most Dominican, you can say. I mean, the <laughs> way he, he expresses himself is really Dominican. Um, Dominicans, are, we are loud. We are expressive, we're emotional, and he shows that on, on the TV when he is doing games. And and so I think David, also Dominicans like home runs and power hitters, and David was a perfect example of that. In my opinion, it should be Albert because he's greatest um, hitter besides states players um, of all time. Um, so I think he the way he... He moved around the game, and the way he he respected the game and the discipline he had to stay on top of his game until he was 40, 41, I think, um, was really something to look for. Um, and hopefully, another player like that can can come off our grounds here. Yeah, I, can, I mean, I can tell you as someone who uh, is from Massachusetts, and David Ortiz played with the Red Sox for uh, many years. That that up there, he is he's very worshipped. He's up there with Tom Brady. And um, yeah, he is almost like the mayor of Boston right now. Oh yeah, I mean, oh that 2013 season, you know, after yeah. the the unfortunate bombing, he came out and and you know hyped up the city of Boston, and they won the World Series that year when they were uh, not expected to. They did not have a good um, overall team compared to other teams. But uh, but yeah, I'm also a big David Ortiz fan. Um, and yeah, I actually didn't know Manny Machado was uh, born in in the U.S. I just knew he played for the Dominican team. But I just figured him like I feel like he. He's been around for a while and he does kind of a lot of things right. Good personality. I, I just figured people uh, like him. He's also very polarizing because he's done some dirty stuff on the field. But I, I like Manny Machado overall, I'd say. Um, I like it too. If you hear yeah. him talking Spanish, you'll notice that's not really oh, okay. Dominican Spanish. <laughs> that's that's a, a really well-taught Spanish <laughs> for someone from the States. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you listen to David in comparison, you'll see that's Dominican Spanish. We, we speak really quick. We don't finish words. We cut them off right before <laughs> the last two or three words. That's two or three letters. So that's that's more like the Dominican Spanish uh, we speak here. It's really hard to understand okay. if if 
let's say if you spoke Spanish, you wouldn't understand anything I, I was saying if I spoke locally. Yeah, no, I, I was I was telling you before the show, my, my wife speaks Spanish and when she hears a Dominican player speaking, she she also gets confused yep. because it's very fast and a lot of slang. But um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, all right. So back to uh, your gameplay. Um, are you, what is the question I had here? Oh yeah, are you looking at the market uh, this time of year? Uh, I don't think you've you've made too many acquisitions recently, but you know, prices down, being the off season, not much hype with baseball, or are you kind of, uh, waiting for the new cards to be released for next season to kind of jump back into it. To be honest, I haven't looked at the market for a long time on the MLB side. Um, I'm, I'm also trying to sell a couple of my MLB players. Maybe all of my super rares are up for sale or available to sell, to be sold. And some of the uniques are too, uh, because I'm, I'm really enjoying my time on the football side. I'm starting to to see the the football side a little bit clearer um i forgot i forgot i've had good conversations with people on this side and and they they have uh indicated me in a way that that i understand how the game works so that's why i haven't been looking at the mlb market at all at all i would say i've been i've been offering some of my uniques um uh, for managers that own also uniques on football side maybe they want to trade Cross sports. I know Sir doesn't provide that that um, yet, but um, us as managers, we got to find a way to make deals happen, and that's one of them. So, yeah, to answer your question, I haven't been looking at the MLB market at all. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, December is a pretty dead month for baseball, um, but but yeah, we should talk about football a little bit. I know I'm not uh, super into. Uh, that sport, um, but I am I I do like the sport of of, of soccer. Um, I just not super into it, but I, I do see you are. You tweet about it a lot, and I was looking at your gallery. You did uh, just five days ago acquire uh, someone named Anton Stach of yep. uh, Germany. So what a uh, unique card! And and then seven days prior to that, you also picked up another um, unique card of someone who I can't pronounce. Uh, so so what is your sort of strategy uh, right now uh, in, in football acquiring these cards and 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 what sort of the strategy there? Sure. Um, so just to talk about, uh, I'm trying to buy players or acquire players to open up my West Ham stack to compete in, in Champ Europe unique or Cap 270, for example. I think that's mm -hmm. a great competition that we have in, in the football side. So I bought Anton stack because if you, well, if you go d deep into his numbers, He's probably one of the most prolific players, like pro prolific box-to-box -box players in Germany right now, also being considered to go to the national team. And he just got bought by Hoffenheim, a German team. He was playing for Mainz before. And under this system, he's been great. Um, he's been playing as a holding midfielder. Um, he also goes up. He's taking the corners, and I'm not sure if free kicks yet, free kicks yet, but... Under this system, he's been performing well. I saw a video on him. I went deep on, on, on research. I found a, a Twitter thread on him uh, from some football scouts. I don't know how I found that, but I, I went deep. So I, I had to uh, figure out what I thought about him. And yeah, I, I bought him. Um, he did great this game, last last game week. So I'm happy with that. Easy Parason is how you pronounce that. <laughs> he, <laughs> he's like a Spanish um, La Liga uh, player midfielder not th nothing great but great cap 240 player for the threshold um so yeah that's that's where my mind's at right now trying to buy uniques and trying to trying to open up my west jump stack to play together yeah yeah i see you are buying a lot of uh, younger players i like that how the, the the football cards have the age of the player in the corner unlike the uh unlike baseball i can see how some of these guys 19 20 uh, super young so i uh, should hold value for a while um all right so a question that i have as sort of a beginner maybe there's some people watching here who are probably like who's this dummy uh hosting the podcast doesn't know about football interviewing this guy who's big into football but what what should i be looking for if, I, if i'm starting to play football so rare like like in baseball you know you want the power hitters like you said orange flight you know told you you should uh be going for those power hitters pete alonzo you know john carlos stan whatever what 
what sort of uh, skills should I be looking for when setting my football teams? Is it, um, you know, guys that play a lot of minutes or, or that might sound dumb? What, what, what should I be looking for? I mean, you're asking the right questions. Uh, if someone's trying to get into football, I would say, well, first and foremost, you got to be patient. Um, don't try and go to the secondary market and just buy the first thing you see. Try and do your research. Try and every player is different. Every player is a world. And every player doesn't have a linear success line throughout his career. That only happens with Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo and a couple of selected guys. So you got to understand context of the player. You got to understand age is a real factor on this side because there's a lot behind the scene. At, before the game, there's a lot happening. And these players are human beings. So they go through up and downs. So you got to understand context. You, you can do that. You can go into Twitter, figure out what's going on. You can go into Instagram, their personal pages, and, and see how if they publicate anything. So besides that, on the sports side, you're trying to get guys that if you're trying to get a forward, a, a striker, a number nine, you want guys that have some AA game. That means um, all around game, not only scoring and assisting. You want players that can provide some AAs so they can hit the, num the high numbers. Defender wise, you want guys that have a good system and can hold a, a clean sheet with your keeper. Uh, you want to correlate those two. And midfield, you want guys maybe taking corners and free kicks. And guys like Alex Garcia from Girona, um, who does everything well, or guys like Rodri from Man City who do do everything well. So yeah, uh, my my would my suggestion would be patience and 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 get into context, like try and understand where the player is coming from, what what what's going on, um, beside behind the scenes, and and understand managers and team. Because it, the football side is really complex. It's bigger, 10 times bigger than the MLB side. So there's a lot more information you get to handle. Hmm. Yeah. And I yeah, can go on and on about this, but I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> make this a monologue. No, that's all right. Um, yeah, I want to focus on football just a little bit longer. So I'm looking at your uniques here. Uh, you have 10 of them, like I said, in the intro. Um, only one guy I, rec I recognize because of the World Cup. Uh, Lucas Paqueta, hopefully I'm saying that right, of yep. Brazil. I remember him. He was good. Um, so do you have a, a favorite card in your collection, you know, a card that has, has done well for you in, in contests? Yeah. No, no, the first one has been the one because it's such a risk to go um, and buy this guy. I had to think it through. I had to watch a lot of games he played last year. He's a Costa Rican forward. Um, he's like a god right now in Costa Rica because he's doing great. So I, I, he was loaned to Twente, a uh, team in Edivy DC in Holland last year, and they bought him for four million. Um, that type of team doesn't pay that much money for a player. So that gave me a confidence behind of of the talent I was seeing. They saw it first, obviously. And uh, what's um, his name? Sorry, uh, what's his name by the way? Manfred Ugalde. Oh, okay. I see. I see him now. Yeah, uh, okay. the number one, the fifth, the first one I bought uh, five okay. months ago. Um, so I paid, I paid a huge surplus on him. Uh, the manager that owned him prior to me paid about 0. 0.8, and I paid three ETH for him, 3.2, you can say. So that's a, a huge bonus, but it, it it's paid off. I mean, he's doing great. Some people want to buy him off of me right right now, but I think. I think he has bigger things coming up for him. I think he, he, he'll he find interest from Bundesliga or maybe a weak top five league where he can play Champions League or Europa League and provide more utility. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the one card. And the next one, Alex Baena from Villarreal. I think the, the potential there is immense. I think that, that that's the profile player I want to buy. Uh, center midfielders that are offensive can take corners, free kicks. Um, can go to the national team, can play for... I could see him playing for Barcelona at some point or maybe Pep Guardiola likes him and takes him to Man City. He, he has the talent to do that. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I remember in the World Cup, uh, which was an awesome World Cup last year, by the way, uh, watching Kylian Mbappe uh, of France, uh, probably my favorite player 
to watch. Uh, I think he also has a, uh, a deal with so rare. I've seen him in pictures with, with Nicholas Julia. Um, where, by the time his career is, is up, where, where, would, where do you think he's going to rank um, as far as all time grades? Can be up there with, with Messi? Damn. That's a, or is he, is he already <laughs> there? That's a great question. That's a really hard question to ask. I think talent wise, he's really high on the list, but I don't think no one can get near Messi, man. He's, we shouldn't be putting him in the conversation to compare him with any anyone. I'm a Real Madrid fan, diehard Real Madrid fan, and um, I don't put Cristiano in the same conversation as Messi, to be honest. And I enjoyed watching Cristiano do his thing for Real Madrid for nine years, I think, or ten, from twenty nine two oh nine to two thousand nineteen, I think, or eighteen. But Messi's on a different category category my bad and um Mbappe I think he'll be a four down or two but he's gonna rack up a couple Ballon d'Ors if he if he's smart he'll come to Real Madrid and and win some Champions League with us so yeah I think he's a great player I think he's probably number one right now in the world maybe number two to Holland um, but he's amazing to watch yeah he's a joy to watch yeah yeah i like messi too obviously uh he won the world cup team argentina um but yeah mbappe looks good hopefully i didn't offend any uh any soccer people um trying to compare these people i don't know i don't know what i'm talking about folks i just no I just no don't the worry up, you have the world cup. <laughs> and um yeah i I, uh, I need to play more fifa i think that's what it is that'll, that'll i'll learn the players if i play fifa i'm gonna make that my goal for 2024 um <laughs> all right that's a so, good idea hey i i learned nba doing to playing NBA 2K mm -hmm. for real, I did, and then NBA, sorry, NBA came down, and I knew most, if not all, the players. Mm -hmm. So that's a good way to learn uh, about uh, the football side, yeah. And, and real quick on NBA because I was looking up your profile there, uh, you actually don't have many cards, you only have common, but I know, uh, didn't you say that you had sold some? So, what is your experience with NBA on, on so rare? Yeah, I compete. I competed on season one, but after seeing the the road the U.S. office has taken managing the MLB side, I said, I have too much risk on this side. I want to divert, diversify my risk, and I want to put it in, on hands of people that I, can th I think I can trust, and those are the people in the other side of the world in France managing the football side. So that's why I hopped off the nba side i enjoyed the the heck out of it i i had a lot of success but i just think the way they're running it everything's gonna go down to being worthless if they keep doing this and it's scary i'm sad to i'm i don't want to uh, express negative things about it but that's my thoughts i think they're really dragging what they they are they should be doing and um Maybe that's an opportunity for someone else. I know there's managers that are really optimistic. I know the product is amazing. Um, maybe those managers are getting a great deal for the future if if those two sports really pop off. But I'm not in a position to risk everything to 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 go down on the U.S. office. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, Mark went on a, a pretty legendary uh, physical versus digital collectibles debate on our show. Um, I think uh, you know, the majority of people are, are still trying to wrap their heads around digital collectibles. But um, like you said, there, there could be a, you know, a competitor uh, of so rare and, and, you know, something in the, in the digital collectibles and gaming space pop up um, down the road. But um, I guess as we get closer to uh, the end of, of the pod here, we are at almost 40 minutes. Uh, do you have any, any uh, closing thoughts on, on so rare and, and the future? Like what, what sort of are your, your goals for the sport and and uh, where, where do you sort of see the, the the platform going forward um let me think about that <laughs> yeah mark mark is great i mean when he talks you shut up and you listen because that guy experience wise um thought process wise vision wise he's um unique on that sense my thoughts of on on the future of surveys i think great it wouldn't be great. You would notice it's not optimistic based on my purchases. So 
I, I haven't done anything on the MLB side, but you know the gallery I have and the players I have. I'm not trying to run out and sell everything to someone for a buck. Um, I'm, I'm, I like the pro I love the product. I think the product's amazing. So I'm optimistic they'll figure it out. I'm, I'm fingers crossed they do. Fingers crossed they listen to some of the managers that try and help them, not for personal benefit, just for the growth of the amazing product they have in their hands. And on the football side, I just want to... Uh, I want to compete against the big guys. I don't have the budget to do that, but I really want to compete against the big guys. I want to win some competitions. Um, I love watching football too. So I love competing with my team and, and watching the games. Um, and yeah, hopefully one day I can win unique division and get uh, Jude Bellingham. If you don't know Jude Bellingham, you should find out who he is. He's... <laughs> He's unique. He's like the reincarnation of Zinedine Zidane. And if you don't know Zinedine Zidane, you should be watching more football. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're going to have to uh, DM me that name after. I, I haven't heard that, but I will I will dive into that. Yeah. <laughs> Zidane um, is, like, is like if you create a player on a robot, that Zidane comes out. Like the perfect player, I think you could say Zidane is that guy. <laughs> Messi, no, because he's an astronaut. He's he's a Martian. <laughs> he's not from this world. But if you if you build the the, have you ever played FIFA by any chance? I have, but not in like probably ten years. All right, so you know that NBA, you have like my player. You create your player and yeah. you put all the attributes. That's Zidane. Zidane is like the oh. perfect player in all senses. Probably he's, not he's... defensive as as someone will criticize on on the comments down below, but he was like a magician, like. Effortless athleticism is a way I would describe it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I'll have to. Um, I'll have to research that. I mean, if you if you say that he is the reincarnation of whoever you said, I mean, I I need to uh, I need to look into this. I'm uh, I, I trust you on this. I mean, you know more about it than me. Um, yeah, just <laughs> just look at the numbers of Bellingham in in Real Madrid, and you'll see he's playing as a midfielder, and he has the most goals in la liga that's not normal <laughs> so obviously we're playing under a system that provides all he needs to score and assist but he's he's well you can you can ask mark he owns a unique of him um he's just elegance on the field <laughs> all right uh last question i want to ask you before we get out who is the best so rare player right now is it mark we've mentioned mark several times is it orange fly is it Steve aced out. Who is the best Sora player in the world, in your opinion? Or is it you? You can say yourself. <laughs> no, I think I think individually in each sport, there's someone. Um, I don't want to mention most most names, but overall, yeah. in all three sports, is undoubtedly Mark. Undoubtedly, I think there's a close second. Um, uh, when when uh, I don't know if you pronounce his name like that, but oh, when moon AJ yeah. when moon yeah. I think if you compete in all three sports and you win in all three sports and you are a high stakes competitor, you don't have to be a high stakes competitor. You can win in your division. That's okay. I have no problem with that. But doing it in all three sports at a really great success rate, that makes you a great server manager. Not great, like elite. Then individually, um, I think MLB, the best manager I've seen in MLB, it's got to be Joey. He wins in all it? divisions. Joey? Say it again. J-W-J-U-Y. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you I don't see, know I him, you got to research his gallery. He's the best sort of MLB manager, I think. On the football mm -hmm. side, I got to give it to Team Bambi because I think his gallery speaks for itself. And on the NBA side, I got to give it to Mark. And Mark is a really close second on the football side too, and a really close second on the MLB side. So you can see why where I'm going with this. He's great on all three, but individually, hmm. he's beat by two guys on MLB and on football. I think. Hmm. Interesting. I, I like that ranking. But he's, uh... he's the best one overall. Yeah. Mark, listen to me. You're the best. <laughs> You're the best manager overall, in my belief. <laughs> I mean, hey, one one first and two seconds. I mean, that's that's, that's great. That's pretty good numbers right there. Um, 
All right, <laughs> good stuff there. Um, and I think we can go ahead and, and close the show. We covered a lot of good topics here. We're at 45 minutes. Um, Miguel, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, when Mark says that, that you would make a great guest, then I know that I have to listen, had to reach out and get you on. So I appreciate it. Uh, tell the people where they can find you over on Twitter and, and your so rare username. Sure. Um, well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you having me. Um, you did an amazing interview right here or amazing pod, whatever you want to call it. It was, it was a pleasure to be here. Um, so my Twitter handle is um, just my kit. And uh, my story gallery name is just Mike as well. I want to say one last thing. Yeah. I really think Sora MLB needs to speak to Steve Adler. I'll, I'll just say that because he's okay. the most passionate person I've known on the Sora MLB side, knowledgeable of the game, really good with numbers. I haven't seen that enthusiasm on anyone on Sora MLB. <laughs> and I know, I know he'd be a great asset for the Shore MLB team. Um, so yeah, I, I had to say that. Uh, I think, I think he'll add a lot of value to the Shore MLB team if they, if he finds a way to, to, to work in correlation while also competing. I hope he can compete because he's a great, a great manager as well. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, had Steve on the show, had a great conversation, did very well, got tons of views. People love Steve. Um, and yeah, I think he would. Also make a great addition, a very knowledgeable of the game, loves the community, and a great yep. player too. Uh, tons I of great for, for Steve. So, all right. Well, thank you everyone for watching another episode of Sideline Talk. We'll be back next week. Hope everyone enjoys their um, – <laughs> I had it in my script uh, Thanksgiving, but that was a while ago. <laughs> Hope everyone enjoys the upcoming uh, Christmas holiday, and um, we'll catch you guys next time.